Hi, today we're going to make a chocolate orange cake and you can have it on keto as well as protein sparing days. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. Welcome back to all the returning viewers. Okay, so today I'm going to make a cake. It's uh, going to be a an orange cake with a chocolate glaze. Um, I don't know if you've ever had those Terry's chocolate oranges. I really like those. Well, actually, I should qualify that. I used to like those. I still haven't seen a sugar-free version out there. Um, if there if there ever was one, I'd be all over it. So this is uh, this could be our sugar-free version of that. It ha I am going to make use of these products that I, they're available here in Canada, very inexpensively. Uh, this is Simply Delish orange jello dessert. You could use the jello brand gelatin as opposed to this. However, a lot of people don't like to use sucralose um, and there is a fairly long list of ingredients on that compared to this one. So this one is definitely more keto friendly. It, uh, I just want to read a couple of things. There's this legend on the side. This is vegan friendly, non-GMO, keto friendly, lactose free, nut free, gluten free. But it's not flavor free, that's the important thing. It does have a nice flavor. It is sweetened with, it is sweetened with erythritol. I cannot read this, it, I, need, I need like magnifying glass. Uh, it looks like carrageenan, okay. It is sweetened with erythritol. Erythritol is a keto-friendly sweetener. And uh, yeah, so it's it, it has a nice bright orange flavor and that's what we're going to be using in our cake today. As well as a small amount of, they have puddings, a small amount of their vanilla instant pudding um, is also gonna go in here. And that will provide the base, uh, like the flavor base for the cake. Uh, we're actually going to use a version of the protein sparing modified fast bread recipe. The only thing is I want this to be spongier and more meringue like because it's going to be like an angel food cake texture. So I am going to cut back on the egg white powder and it will be, you know, so it'll have more more egg whites to egg white powder, plus our, our pudding and our jello, and plus a couple other ingredients that I'll, I'll bring over here. And uh, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I have carton egg whites. You can certainly use fresh. I'm not making like the full 12 egg white version here. I just, you could make a two layer cake out of this if you use the full recipe. I'm just going to make one layer and, and put a topping on it. I'm going to use three quarters of a cup of egg whites from the carton. That's about six egg whites approximately. Uh, I have set my oven to 325 degrees. So I'm just gonna put the egg whites in here. Whoa, look at that. Just went over a little bit, but there's no point in saving like a teaspoon of egg whites. Okay, so there's our egg whites. And I want some cream of tartar in here. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of cream of tartar. All right, so we're going to get this going. Should take uh, six to eight minutes, somewhere around there. Let's get this puppy going. All right, so in a separate bowl, I'm going to measure out my other ingredients. I'm going to use egg white powder, two tablespoons. I'm going to use one tablespoon of the Simply Delish vanilla pudding. That's about right. There's a 
there's about three tablespoons in a packet. I'm going to use two tablespoons of the orange gelatin mix. Actually, correction, there's about two tablespoons, not even in a package. Unless maybe the pudding has more, I'm not sure. I will check on that. But okay, a whole package. These are fairly inexpensive at the grocery store. Um, I'm gonna say about $1.99 each. Just a pinch of salt, just to give it a little bit of enhancement of the flavor. Now, when we make the bread, I like to use allulose, but for the cake, I don't need any browning. Um, I'm going to use a couple of tablespoons of just monk fruit sweetener. There is sweetener, of course, in the uh, pudding and ge gel gelatin mix, so we don't need too much. Maybe just a couple more tablespoons. Just gonna mix this all up. And I have some orange extract here. I am going to put in, I'm gonna go with a quarter teaspoon, I think. And smoosh it all in. The egg whites, they look pretty good. That smells like orange. I'm gonna put a little more orange in. If you have any Lorenz drops, you know, any of those orange drops or one to one, I think it's called, anything like that, you can use that. All right, I think... Uh, we have some nice, stiff-looking egg whites here. I'm not quite sure how long we went, but I am just going to put my powder in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, incorporate the rest of the dry, or all the dry mix in here. We've got our egg white powder and, and all the, the, the flavorings. So I'm just gonna put it on the lowest setting. And then I'm gonna go one more. I can see there's some orange and white. It looks like a creamsicle. So I'm just going to incorporate by hand just to get it a little more evenly distributed. Although creamsicle cake would not be a bad thing, would it? Orange creamsicles. When I was growing up, that was my favorite go-to. It's probably why I like the orange cake. Terry's orange balls. Those are those are good. All right, that looks like it's nice. Okay, so I have my cake pan. Somebody, when I made a cake, I can't remember when it was, but maybe a month ago, somebody said, what you do with the parchment paper is you crunch it into a ball and then put it in. So I'm gonna try that because it sounded like a fun thing to do. if this works. Oh, and I think I saw, this might, it might have been Janet Greta, I'm not sure, but I think I saw somebody spray their pan so that the parchment paper sticks to it. So I'm gonna give that a try. I just love all the comments I get from people because sometimes I learn some really cool tricks, tips, and hacks. 
like this one. Let's see how this how this goes. Now normally when I'm making the bread, I don't do anything. I just put the bread batter in my loaf and it comes out fine. But I have found with the sweeter loaves or cakes or desserts that I do, there can be some sticking that happens. And I, I imagine it's just because of what else I have in there. Well, okay, I, I mean, I see the logic behind this, um, but I do like the, the tip. Pretty sure it was Janet, Greta. Maybe, she, maybe she'll see this and chime in. The spraying the pan and then putting the paper on it, the paper adheres really nicely to the bottom of the pan. So I like, I like that a lot. That works. Um, I need some scissors though. The OCD in me wants to take this off. <laughs> Thank you, the scissors magically appeared. I just, I can't, I can't do it. There's just too much hanging over the edge. Okay. Now let's put our, put our cake in. Oh, I'm getting some nice orange scent from here. Can anybody else hear Pippi snoring while I do this? I know it's a boring job, but somebody's got to do it. I'm sorry, but I just have to try it to see. Mm. Okay, that should be nice. All right, so our cake is going to go in for 325 for about 30 minutes. And uh, then we will put a dark chocolate glaze on top. All right, here it goes. We'll be back when the cake is ready. Okay, our cake is done. I'm going to put it here on this rack. Look at that, very nice looking. Okay, we need a few minutes for that to cool down and then we'll take it out of the parchment paper and put the glaze on. So while we're waiting for that to cool down, let's make our chocolate glaze. For these cakes um, that I make, and you've probably seen it if you watched my birthday cake video, my number one preference for uh, frosting them is just plain whipped cream. No sweetener in it, no flavorings, just I, I would take a quarter cup of whipped cream, whip it up, and that would be more than enough topping for this. And this is about, this is going to be about eight to ten servings. Um, however, a lot of you that are doing protein sparing have told me that you are doing it dairy-free. And so, um, fair enough. Uh, that's why I'm doing the chocolate glaze today. I do also like the chocolate glaze. So uh, along that same note, according to, these are Lily's dark chocolate chips. Uh, they have other flavors like white chocolate and butterscotch and milk chocolate, all those lovely things. Um, but according to their website, this is the only one that's dairy free. So if you are wanting to stick 100% to being dairy free, then then get these ones and I'll provide, I'll provide an Amazon link, I guess. That's where I get them from. Um, although sometimes the, uh, the grocery store has them now. So, but it's, you know, about the same price, honestly. So anyways, uh, yeah. So it's the dark 55% cocoa, stevia sweetened. So there we go. So for this glaze, I'm going to uh, measure out about uh, two ounces. Oh, 
whoops, I have it on grams. So let me just change that. I'm gonna make it a nice even two ounces. Okay, two ounces. Oh, which is, for those of you, it's about 55 grams. So say 60 grams of chocolate chips, dark, or about two ounces. And uh, that should be enough to cover this. So in there, I'm going to also add a little bit of coconut oil and some orange extract, which is optional, you don't have to. But since we're going with the uh, Terry's chocolate orange theme here, <laughs> may as well. I think about a quarter teaspoon should do it. Oh, and I have this giant Costco size. I wish I had never bought this. It's way too big for the amount that I use. Uh, so I'm just gonna put in a teaspoon. All right, I'm just going to uh, microwave this and uh, melt the chocolate chips and the coconut oil. And hopefully by then we'll be taking that out. All right, let's see. So we've got our chocolate. I'm going to put in a quarter teaspoon of orange extract, or if you have some other type of flavor drops. That would work. Mm, smells like orange liqueur. Now we need to work with this thing. So I, I was tugging at this a little bit. I'm not so sure that I would do the crumpled parchment paper hack again. I mean, to me, it seems like I would have had better results just spraying the pan. I mean, it's, it is coming off, but it's, you know, it's not what I would have liked to see. I mean, especially if you were serving this cake to company. I'm just worried that, I'm gonna, well, we'll see what happens to the bottom here. I don't know. Maybe I will have to turn it upside down and very, carefully try to maneuver this off. Okay, it's not too bad. Yay! <laughs> All right, I was expecting much worse. I mean, the sides look a little bit gunky, but nothing that can't be, you know. If I had done the whip topping, that's one thing I love about whip topping is that you can kind of smoosh it over the sides and the top and all sins are forgiven. Nobody can see the flaws. It's not so much true with the, with the glaze. However, taste will, will help. This is gonna taste amazing. I'm kind of thinking I might do a little bit of poking so that some of the chocolate, because I think I have more than enough chocolate here, and maybe I'll let it drip down the sides. You know where you see those naked cakes with the, uh, you know, the icing uh, kind of dripping down the sides? Actually, if I had an elevated cake thing, that would look good. Okay, I'm gonna, just live with it the way it is, but I will poke a few holes. I just use the end of a, of a chopstick for that. Just random. Then you get the little surprise burst of chocolate in your mouth every now and then. Okay, so let's, let's drizzle this over. I'm so glad September is almost over. It's been very painful putting these things in the freezer after I have only one or two bites. It's been painful watching people make long johns and then filled long johns on top of that. Janet Greta's killing me. But just wait, just wait till October rolls around. You could just smear it on. <laughs> you don't have to do this, this slow drizzle that I'm doing. I just think it makes it look a little more festive or something. And I'm hoping that some will drip down the sides. Let's see if I can miss or get it close to the edge so it does drip a little bit. You can tell I'm not a baker. They must have all kinds of cool tricks. So because this has coconut oil in it, 
I mean, this is how we used to make chocolate shell for ice cream. You'd put a little coconut oil into the chocolate and it, as soon as it hit the cold ice cream, kind of hardens into a shell. This will do the same thing. These, these squiggles will, once it's in the fridge, they'll get all crunchy. So that's the other reason why I don't like to just sort of smear it on, on top because it does turn into that hard, hardish, not hard, hard, but um, it does turn into a shell, which is a nice effect when you have these, these little squiggles because they're, they're easy to bite into. They're kind of yummy if you like, uh, if you miss having sort of a, a chocolate bar or something like that. So that was probably just the right amount, I think. This uh, topping is the only fat in this cake. So the cake will still fit your macros um, each. If you broke this up into about eight pieces, I think it was two grams of fat. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put that all below once this video is, is ready, just so you have that information. That's probably good enough, okay. All right. So, yeah, in a couple of areas it kind of, you know, went down, but then in a couple of other areas it didn't because there's almost like a lid. Probably next time I would maybe trim the edges off of this cake so that it can kind of dribble down over the edge and, and look, uh, look fancy. You could also, and still be dairy free, you could take some egg white and some Swerve Confectioner's sugar and mix that up with your blender. It will whip up and make sure the egg whites are pasteurized. Um, you know, your raw pasteurized egg whites in the carton. Whip it up into peaks and uh, you could just put, you know, a little, you use one of those pastry what are they called? The pastry bags and, and put some roses around this. That would look pretty, wouldn't it? <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't have that kind of patience. I think I would just eat it like this. I'm going to put this in the fridge for a few minutes to let the top do its thing. And then we will cut a piece. I'll, I'll take my giant bite <laughs> as much as I can fit into my mouth. Okay, so this has had a little time to sit in the fridge and um, harden up a bit. What I want to do is, I, I am going to be cutting this up and freezing it, but I kind of wanted to see how many serving, I, I was thinking eight to 10, and hopefully that's reasonable. So let me cut it in half first, so you can see what it looks like. So it's just kind of like a fluffy orange cake. I, I hope it's fluffy. So let's say eight servings. Then it's much easier to cut. Okay, so that is going to be the size of a serving, which I think is reasonable for after dinner. It's got a little kick of protein. Okay, so let's put it on a plate. Chocolate is still maybe just a little bit soft, so I might just leave that before I cut any more, but I just, yeah. <laughs> I have chocolate hands. I'm going to be walking around later going, how did I get chocolate on that? Okay, I get to take my, my bite, my one and only bite. I better make it a, from a good part of this. Oh, look at that, there's some chocolate there. Okay, I am going to take a bite of this. It, I can smell orange. Mm. I love it. I love it. It's got, I love that orange, there's a bursty orange flavor and the little bit of chocolate glaze on top makes it just perfect. Nice and light. 
Oh, Teddy, I'm sorry. Not for doggies, not for doggies. We'll do steak next time, okay? Or some kind of protein for you, okay? Anyways, oh, um, th this cake, I have made it before in a different flavor without the chocolate glaze. I've made it, I, I usually make it with the whipped cream topping. It does freeze really well. So um, I don't have any qualms at all about freezing this. It'll be, it'll be easy, it'll come out nice. Anyways, I hope you, I hope you give it a try and let me know what you think or let me know what flavor combinations you've come up with. Um, it's, you know, simple, a simple cake made with grocery store ingredients. I'll put all the links below and we'll see you guys next time. Somebody tells me I should have sprayed the parchment paper. Yeah, don't do too, too much switching back. We don't want to. <sighs> this could be a fail. Jelly, what? Jello, you know, the Jello, Jello, what is that brand? Jello, however, Jelly, you could use the Jello, what, what is that called? Jello, you could, however, use Jello brand gelatin. However, here, where did I see that? Oh boy, hang on. Ah, here, here it is. Gelatin. Where's my egg whites? There they are. Okay, so I, so I, I don't need to do this again, right? Okay, so I, so I, I don't need to do this again, right? Okay, so I, so I, I don't need to do this again, right? A lovely song. I'll, I'll take my giant bite <laughs> as much as I can fit into my mouth. Aww. Did you bring that to me? Can you just, just let me get this off the cake first? <laughs>